Hi guys, so this is going to be part two of how to build a dry stone wall. Um, I already showed you in the last video how to put a footing in. I'm going to be doing that again in this video, uh, but I'll, I'll just be explaining a bit less about that and then more about how to wall on top of it. Um, I'm expecting this video is going to be quite long. Essentially, if you're not really into walling, it might be a bit boring, so that I'm just warning you. There's a, there's a lot of stuff to explain. Um, and I'm going to try and get into the the real detail of it and give away a few secrets that uh, I know in the past that have been closely guarded but I'll give them away for now so yeah uh, I'll bang this footing in now um, and then well I'll probably get it to through height halfway up so I'll just be explaining all that and uh, yeah let's get cracking Um, if I put it footings in, I'm just using my wall and hammer and a um, little sledgehammer, so you should be able to find something like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, what I've just done there, the decision um, to prioritise the tightness inside, that is how I wall um, face. It's important, but it doesn't always come first. Um, I'd rather get the, get the inside structure looking good. And then, you know, if you know what you're doing, the face is gonna look good anyway but you just know that your wall's gonna last a lot longer. You know, it's fucking, I mean, it's bloody satisfying. Right, so that's that done. Uh, so we're now at the point um, where I was at the end of the first video on footings. Um, I just thought I'd mention one of my least favourite myths about walling. And uh, you always hear people say it, and you even see some people doing it, and that's walking on the footing. It's even written down on some of the like uh, information sheets and stuff like, oh, you should be able to walk on your footings. That's a total load of crap. In this instance, you might be able to walk on them because they're massive stones and they're not going to move on their own. But if you're walling something really thin, doesn't matter how well you've walled it, if you rock your foot around on it, it's going to move. If anyone says that, you can just rest assured that they don't know what they're talking about really. They've just, um, they've just read it somewhere. Um, walls don't behave in that manner when they're built. When you've got a ton on top of something, you know, let's say you've just walled really thin stones because it's all you've got, or even small ones, it's all you've got. Um, of course, like, if you did rock your foot around on it, put your all, all your body weight on it, moved it around, it's going to rock. But you try moving it when there's a ton of wall on top of it, it's just not going to happen there's all that pressure coming down onto that stone and pushing it into the ground. 
so it could never move. Obviously, you want to wall the stones as solidly as you can do, but to say that you should be able to walk all over them, it's a total myth that was made up by people who weren't wallers in the first place. They were just people that like writing stuff down, so controversial opinion maybe, but it's right. So let's crack on with the actual video now. Got that done. So this video is all about walling on top of stone. We've shown how to wall on top of the ground. You can get away with a bit more stuff doing that. This is about walling on top of stone where you, you can't alter what's there too much. Um, so I'll go, I need to go get some more stone now and uh, maybe have a cup of tea. So I'll uh, catch you in 10 minutes. Um, so what I'm going to try and do now, before I just start walling, um, you know, just before I just start walling on here, what I want to try and do is illustrate some of my thought processes. Um, that uh, yeah, some of the things I think about when I'm selecting stones, and at this point I do it unconsciously, but it, there were things that I uh, figured out over a number of years and after watching people doing. So um, I'll be starting the first place where I'm going to wall a stone is at this lower end, so there's a slight slope, I'm at the lower end here. Um, the, the footing that I put on, it's going slightly uphill, so um, yeah, I might try and level that out. Now, um, I'm going to mark on with paint, like the, the ideal stone that I need, that, um, you know, if, if in an ideal world, I'd have a stone that went halfway there, crossed onto the back there, then comes halfway to that stone. So that's that's what I'm thinking about when I start walling. I want to I want to be crossing that that's that joint there. I want to be crossing it halfway, and if I can, I want to be lapping onto the other side so that it's tying both of these sides together. So I'll have a little scan through the pile uh, and see what I've got. Now that is the broadest stone. So I might try that. I think that probably will do it, to be fair. See that? That is the almost perfect shape, but it's not sitting very well. So I need to find out what's causing that. Something I do sometimes, if there is a lump, I'll just shove the stone around a little bit, like that. Pull it away. Then you can see traces of where it's been, been rubbing. Um, so I can see that it was just there on this lump. So I know that's going to be too high. That actually sits pretty well. You know, if I were just to pin that at the back. Now that is absolutely lovely. The only issues this stone causes is that it's that long that it's making the stone on this side be very short. So if I were forward planning, I'd knock off just a little bit of that. Now it needs repinning because uh, the pin was actually under that bit. So maybe just a little more. It, that stone's still lapping onto this one, but we've got a little bit more room to play with here found the next stone it's not perfect I'd say the main issue with it is that it's not crossing this stone far enough there's a good solution for this I'll shove this one up this way bring that one up this way right, somewhat underneath it's holding it up now what I'm going to show you is the most useful trade secret I know. Um, this is the best hammering technique 
in the planet. It's called Secret Bottom Edge. Uh, back in the day, this would have been a closely guarded secret. Or, you know, some people figure it out on their own or whatever, but see a lot of people not doing it. Um, anyway, best striking edge on a hammer is the bottom edge. Now, that's why you always need a square edge on a walling hammer. You see these with like, they've just got two tungsten bits there. They're, they're no good. So I'm gonna strike it with the bottom. And that's because when I'm bringing this down full force, all the power from the hammer is going into the stone. If you do it sideways like that, some of the force inevitably gets turned around. You can't get it all into the stone. So this is the secret bottom edge. Everything comes off that you want. Right now, we're still a little bit high. It's on a, it's on a lump here. Let's see if I can get it off with hammer. See, I told you it was going to be a long and boring video. But this is dry stone walling we're talking about. One of the main things about walling is getting good contact on the bed. You know, that's one of the key principles. You don't want it sat on a little bobble. You want it to have as much surface area contact as possible. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm taking off them lumps so that it gets more contact. So it's got more friction. Right. So that sits very nicely now. Just needs a pin on the back. Perfect. Now, because this stone's so broad, I've got the chance to just shove it up this way. Still crossing nicely there. It's trying to sit that tomorrow halfway there. But it's just coming a bit further uh, across on that on that stone. Um, so there. That's two stones walled. The main thing, well, there's obviously a lot of main things, um, but something to look out for when you're walling is that you can place a stone on top of these. Um, I think from that point to that point, we've, we're level. That's a bit high. So, I mean, with big stone, I tend to use hammer and chisel. If I were just using nice size stuff, It'd be a cardinal sin to use a chisel, but big stuff don't don't really move around, um, and it's a little hammer can't really do much to it. So, yeah, hopefully, in me walling these two stones, you've had an insight into my thought processes, which has been crossing the joint well, not crossing it too much so that you. you you cause a near joint or a straight joint crossing onto the backside and just uh, you know hutching things around a little bit if they're not crossing just right you can move stuff you can you know alter things around and getting that good contact on the bed you know doing the work on the stone so that you're getting good contact so that if there's movement if there's movement in the ground they're gonna there's enough friction to keep it up. Right, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wall up backside and try and follow, you know, follow the uh, the internal joint there. Three weeks later. Hey up you a lot. So Morning. we're gonna continue uh, where we left off the other day. Lydia's here today as well, so <laughs> we should get quite a bit done. Um, Yes, yeah, so we're just carrying on on top of that footing uh, where I've spray painted there. That was my idea of what I might, like in an ideal world, those are the stones I'd want to put on next. Um, I reckon once we've got this course on, we might be ready for throughs. So um, 
as a wall in this course, we might bear in mind what thrills we've got and uh, where we'll place them. So, yeah, we're just going to get stuck in now and get that walled and... Uh, grand job. Grand job, see, see how we do. So, let's get... Cool, let's get cricked. Let's get cricked. So we've got that course done. Um, we are we're going to put throughs on now. It's, a, it's probably a little bit low to put them on for a normal wall, but we'll we'll probably put two course on. So we'll put one down here and then one up here. Um, sometimes you'll find that like they're, they're usually that like halfway up. Um, but we we put two course in normally, don't yeah. we? Yeah. If, if they're only like if they're like. I guess a meter or less yeah. in height, then you only need really need to put one row in. But if they're anywhere, if they're like, yeah, it's like four foot tall, and you definitely want to be getting two rows in. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, especially it's good to have a, it is good to have them lower down as well. Yeah. It just adds that stability in the bottom. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just that. Yeah. Another anchor in it. Yeah. If um, you've not got so many, try and get them at least one a meter in placement. But if you've got a lot, then just get them everywhere. Because like, <laughs> yeah. They make it so much stronger, especially, well, not in this case, but when you've got very small stone or thin stone, the more you can get in, the absolutely better. Yeah, it's, it really is a thing that like, binds it together. Well, I don't know the science behind it, but it, it definitely probably doubles the life of a wall that it yeah. through it. When you see like old walls that have like snicked up a hill, like you always see loads and loads of glue sticking out, and that's why they're still together and haven't actually fallen over because they move with the ground, but the flues are still like. Yeah. Like, like let the spread, like keep the walls still together. And like sometimes when you come to a gap even, yeah. like it'll be a section where they want to through. Yeah. Or like, yeah, and yeah. there'll be throughs at either end of the gap that are holding it together. Yeah. Um, right, so, yeah, we'll get a couple of, couple of throughs on. There's one there. It's a, it's a rough bastard, but <laughs> that's what you end up with. Yeah. You don't always end up with nice square stuff, so. Aye. We'll probably put one at each end there, yep. and then we can have one in the middle, higher up. Make a nice pattern. <laughs> what a pattern! So, that's what we're doing. Cool. So it's um, this through is crossing those two really nicely. And round here, we have them stuck out at back. Uh, I don't even know if I'm on the screen here. Uh, in, in Cumbria, uh, you'd have them sticking out both sides. Yeah. Uh, it's a regional thing. Yeah, uh, different in different areas. Some places in the Dales, they have like a full course of fruits yeah. all the way along. Um, yeah. <laughs> In Cumbria, because the throughs are so irregular, it's like they don't have a face on anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just want like 
to sort of, you might have a regular bit in the middle. Yeah. And the taper off. Yeah. So you want that regular <clears throat> bit of them. Alright. Alright, I'll just dress that face off a bit. Rocking a little bit, so that obviously needs it needs thinning or summer. <laughs> Do 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 do. Go on then, you little bastard. Yeah, well, you bastard. He loves his blue pipe. So what we what we're gonna do now is wall in between throughs. Uh, it's usually one of the trickier bits of walling, isn't it? Yeah, because it's filling a gap. Filling a gap, so you need an exact. Yeah, pipe. often they're closer together than this as well. Right, that's the bottom of the wall done, isn't it? That's first half. Yeah, low boys. Call it uh, low boys or the first lift if you're being technical. First lift, yeah. First lift. Uh, uh, yeah, the main points of the video, I suppose, are you cross your joints, you're uh, you're following the stones on the inside as well. So you want in the stones to, you know, the sort of the sides of the stones, you want them to butt up pretty yeah. well. So Follow you can each, see the angles of each one. You can see on the video around that shape through. We've got a stone there that follows it there and there. Uh, where you can't do that, put big fill in. Um, and what tools to use when. We're using chisels on this video. I'd say 90% of the time when we are walling, it's just hammers, isn't it? Yeah. Like a brick hammer. Yeah. Um, but the point is, use whatever tool is the most efficient for the job. Um, yeah. With this big dense stone, it's kind of this just stone, the fastest way of like dressing hammers, them in it. Hammers don't really do up to it. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. And you want to be spending like I don't know 30 seconds on a stone, don't you? If you're just <laughs> straightforward walling, like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you want the least time possible. Like. Really. Doing Maybe four messing. or five hits with hammer or chisel. Yeah, yeah. If you're having to spend like five, five minutes, five <laughs> minutes on a stone. Yeah, it's the wrong stone. You've picked the wrong one. <laughs> um, that's some. That is the essence of walling, isn't it? Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. it's walling. It's not manufacturing stones. Yeah, yeah. If you're having to shape all, all the stones all the time, then you need to spend a bit more time in picking them and yeah, thinking yeah. about it. Um, yeah. So that's yeah, that's a wrap for. The this bottom video. left. Yeah. Hope um, hope you can kind of understand the the process. It's it's really difficult to explain, isn't yeah. it? Like we'll do another video sometime that's like a bottom lift but with much smaller stone because it's like it's different again when you've yeah. got different stuff. If it's thinner stone or even just smaller narrow pieces, there's even yeah. more to think about yeah. in them instances. Yeah. Especially if it's sort of narrow stones, there's a lot more to think about. Um, yeah, here with this broad stuff, you know it's going to be strong, yeah. whatever you do. Yeah, even yeah. if you do... And crossing joints is kind of a lot easier yeah, this is with easy wide stones. Because uh, um, it gets, wide. gets harder with smaller stuff in that instance, yeah. Um, so, but this this should show you, yeah, you know, this is a good world. example <laughs> of how to do a strong wall. Yeah. So we'll get, in the next video, we'll do the top. That'll have a top through on yep. out there. And then we'll 
do some tops do as some well. tops and there'll probably be another video after that showing different kinds of tops yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah right. look awesome. out for the next one thanks for watching cheers guys <laughs> nice one